Let's go to our guest, Dane Wigington, who is the creator of geoengineeringwatch.org, a very interesting website. Let's hope that's one website that we won't crash today. <laughs> so anyway, Dane joins us by phone. Thank you, Dane, and welcome to The Alex Jones Show. Thanks, Mike. Thanks for addressing the issue. And just to correct the record, I want to give credit to Mauro Oliveira for originally starting the site, and uh, Yvonne Noctegal, a great, great gal who, without which we would have no site. But oh, Okay, but I'm sorry about that. that you're you're no running worries. the They're site. great people. I just want to want to make sure they know what uh, we give them credit because they deserve it. Yeah, give credit where it's due, absolutely. On, on this this issue of geoengineering and uh, the ramifications, if people truly understood stood the gravity of this issue, Mike, uh, everyone would carry this torch because, as you stated before the break, uh, people's uh, provisions won't do them any good uh, if they're not able to feed themselves. Those provisions won't do them any good either if they continue to inhale this toxic, uh, metal-laden air that each and every one of us is breathing. And, and if we continue to be exposed to these particulates from the geoengineering fallout, uh, we will not be firing on all neurons for much longer. And we're, we're seeing the effects of that already with the uh, autism and Alzheimer's reports from two weeks back. I mean, th these particulates are bioaccumulative. They are in every breath we take. If they continue to spray, uh, we will have nothing to care about in very short order. Tell us about the chemical composition I've heard of barium salts, aluminum. What what really is being found in these things that are being sprayed? Again, people need to understand that these particulates are not coming from uh, the wind blowing or industrial sources. Th these are new levels of particulates, and industrial sources have been eliminated from much of the testing. And again, there's simply nowhere else they can come from. In the case of the, the amounts of aluminum and barium that we're seeing in tests uh, along the West Coast, we've seen single rain events, Mike, escalate in, in six to seven year period. In the case of aluminum, as much as 50,000% from seven parts per billion to 3,450 parts per billion in a single rain event. Many want to leap to uh, the conclusion that this is coming from China. CARB, California Air Resources Board, has done studies in the aerosols from China. Metals don't float across oceans. These, these toxins are new. They're coming down in such extreme amounts that they're actually changing forest floor pHs 10 to 15 times toward alkaline in the Pacific Northwest. So it takes a lot of metal to actually change the pH of the forest floor. Oh, yeah. so what, what would it be doing to us in each and every breath? Again, it's actually killing trees, so certainly the bioaccumulative effect on us is, has, has to be horrific at this point, and all the medical stats seem to bear that out. You know, Dane, I have to concur with much of what you're saying here. Uh, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm the health ranger, the editor of Natural News, but I also oversee the raw materials acquisition for our own uh, or certified organic manufacturing and retailing operation. And we are having to reject a lot of raw materials now because we're detecting unacceptably high levels of aluminum in the materials. I'm talking about, you know, food, superfood, plant materials, whatever. We're, we're finding it's alarming and we have to reject a lot of uh, supp suppliers. Well, certainly the metal's there. That's not a debate, and uh, it's not speculation in any sense. And we're seeing other things in the mix, too, Mike. Uh, there's researchers from Norway and Germany that have contacted us some time back. The last 60 rain tests they have done there have been laden with fluoride. They've eliminated industrial sources. Crazy. The, the conclusion is that now fluoride appears to be in the mix, and there are some potential uh, weather mod aspects of fluoride as well in relationship to HARP and the uh, when when these particles are exposed to certain radio frequency signals, they coagulate and and can cause precipitation to come back down. I mean, there there are some intricacies that fluoride might be used in addition to um, exposing the human population, which may be one of their goals as well. Well, let's uh, sorry to interrupt, Dane, but let's talk about that for those who might be new to the issue. What are really do you think the goals of of spraying these things? I mean, what what is the goal? What what's the end game of this? Why would they do it? Again. I think there's a number of layers to that onion. There's military strategic purposes. We have the document owning the weather by the U.S. military. Obvious strategic purposes. Uh, at this point, there does appear to be weather warfare going on around the globe. You have the NATO powers on one side of the equation. You have China, Russia on the other. You have examples like Pakistan. When Pakistan uh, started to show resistance to the U.S., uh, suddenly they find their country 20 percent underwater. Same with Thailand. When they refused the U.S. Uh, an air base there that the Thai government felt was for weather modification, then uh, Record flooding occurs there. So there's military strategic purposes. There's also food control, water control. We see 
the moisture flow being cut off to much of the U.S. by blanket spraying of the eastern Pacific. We post satellite imagery of that. We're not guessing. We see their blanket spraying. We know the scientific effect is to, to reduce the hydrological cycle. Water's cut off. Then water rights are pursued. That's happening right now. So it's uh, the disaster capitalism act all over. Then you have toxification of soils that renders seeds uh, um, almost infertile, except for the uh, DuPont aluminum resistant seeds that right. are now being pushed. So again, food control, water control, military strategic purposes, and, and quite simply, a population that's sick doesn't protest much, and we are all getting sick, whether we realize it or not, whether we admit it or not. It is happening. Well, this uh, is... Enough aluminum to kill a forest, enough metal, uh, barium, strontium to kill forest trees will certainly kill us eventually. Absolutely. And uh, this also uh, reiterates the importance of something I mentioned on the show here before, which is we're going to have to grow food in greenhouses because you, you, if your food is subjected to what's falling out of the sky that's being sprayed, then you're going to obviously be intaking that in your food. So this is why I've been talking about aquaponics because... You need to have a food system that you can run yourself that's not taking in, you know, these these things, these, these elements that are falling out of the sky, in, especially in some areas where they're really doing the most spraying. Now, a real quick, Dane, let me just give out the phone number. Uh, for those who've got information about North Korea, if you are listening from Korea, South Korea in particular, uh, or Japan or Taiwan, if you're nearby and you have information and you want to call in, we're going to take your calls in the last five minutes of the show today. The number for that is 800-259-9231. And if you're international, then that number is 651-695-7777. Again, that number for international callers is 651-695-7777. So please call in if you have information about what's happening there with Korea, and we'll take your calls in the last five minutes. Now, continuing, uh, Dane, and, and I'm sorry about, uh, thank you for being flexible today. We've had a lot of uh, breaking news that sort of moved things around, so I, I want to thank you for your patience and your flexibility. No worries. So, uh, go ahead with wh what is the next most important thing that people need to know to be able to protect themselves from the spraying? Well, geoengineering needs to stop because there's no there's nowhere to hide from this, quite simply. If you can't walk out your door and breathe without sucking in a lungful of heavy metal, uh, we have a problem with the first order. And again, based on all available data, we feel geoengineering to be the, the greatest and most immediate threat to life on Earth, short of nuclear catastrophe. It's shredding the ozone layer, altering weather patterns around the globe, blocking in, re in relation to growing our own food. Global dimming, a term many are unfamiliar with, is now thought to be fully 22%. That means 22% of the sun's direct rays no longer reach the surface of the planet. Thus, photosynthesis has dropped, and the light that does come through is in an altered light wavelength form. We don't even know what that does to photosynthesis. Good point. And these toxic particulates are thwarting the entire chain of life on the microbial level from atmospheric microbes, which we are now just beginning to learn about, soil microbes, which are literally being sterilized, which allows fungus to move in and fill the plate. Uh, so, again, the, the web of life from bottom to top is being thwarted by these programs. And, and quite simply, if they continue, we will have nothing to care about. They're shredding the ozone layer. We know that. The science is clear uh, on that. And the ozone layer is so thin in places now, Mike, that we're seeing the bark literally burnt off the south side of native trees in the Pacific Northwest. And no ozone layer, no life on Earth. Uh, again, you know, it's it's crazy. You know, I'm not, and I'm not saying this is the, the case, but it, it sounds like a science fiction movie where like an alien race wants to terraform the planet. I'm not saying that I believe that's ha that's happening. It's just it's just an illustration out of sci-fi. But it sounds like that. You know, it's like they're changing it so much. And you mentioned uh, the pH changes. If you change the pH of the soil, you're right. You're going to create massive disease across all those soils and all the plants that grow in them, and you're going to change the nutrient uptake uh, based on, on pH, you're going to really disrupt the entire ecosystem. Based on pH alone, those factors come into play. But now we add bioavailable toxic metals. In the case of aluminum, we know quite a bit about that. Bioavailable aluminum causes most plant organisms to stop nutrient uptake. And we see this happening in the forest right now. The, the fir trees, yes, they have beetles, but that's only a symptom, not a cause. We know the bioavailable aluminum is there. We know its effect, and we're seeing the, the fallout in the forest. Trees are, are virtually dying everywhere. We have native plants that aren't even sprouting now. So uh, there are so many facets to this that affect every bit of our 
ability to sustain life, the planet's ability to sustain life. If people understood the gravity of geoengineering, Mike, they would they would help us take up this torch because quite yeah. simply, if it doesn't stop, we're we're very soon going to have nothing left to care about. And on the on the human implications here, you know, the FDA will say you can you can eat a certain amount of aluminum and not be harmful, but those numbers don't take into account inhaling the particulate matter. Okay, you bring up an extremely good point. Inhaled metal particulates are much more lethal than ingested. They have to be, yes. And, Orders and, uh, of magnitude. They are. And, and uh, Dr. Russell Blaylock, internationally recognized neuroscientist, acknowledges this. He can be found online. That these particulates are so small, 10 nanometers in range, they go straight through the lung lining, straight into the bloodstream where they adhere to cell receptors like a plaque, and they're almost it's almost impossible to get off. So, And it's all bioaccumulative, and this is building up in all of us. Again, whether we admit it or not is irrelevant. It is happening. So uh, the, the, the danger posed by these programs cannot be overstated, and certainly this would appear to possibly have implications for the Agenda 21 that's now coming to light. Yes. It's certainly a method of controlling food supply, water supply, and, and it's virtually altering Earth's weather patterns so much so that now it is, in fact, triggering cataclysmic feedback mechanisms like methane mass expulsion in the Arctic, which is, it does appear to be triggered and does appear to be happening right now. People should look up methane, Arctic methane emergency. And this is not about Al Gore, not about any of Al Gore's shams or... or uh, no, Al Gore was just trying to hijack something for his own political gain. Exactly. Uh, uh, no, Al, Al Gore is completely discredited as far as I'm concerned. But, but you know, I want to ask you a question. Um, you seem like you have a lot of scientific training or scientific background. I, I don't, I don't really know you that well. This is the first time I've interviewed you. But can you speak to that? What, what is your background? Uh, I have a background in renewable energy. I'm a former Bechtel Power employee. I don't know that's a four-letter word like Halliburton at this point. But I, I worked on one of the f first commercial solar plants in the continental U.S. And uh, that's what brought me to this issue. I, when I moved to the Pacific Northwest, I built a very large off-grid home that was on the cover of the world's largest renewable energy magazine. And when I began to lose 50, 60, 70, 80 percent of my solar PV uptake from whatever was happening in the sky, these grid patterns on intermittent days, I, clearly something profound was going on. And I, I quickly, in research, came to the topic of geoengineering. And, and as the, the gravity of this issue became apparent, uh, filling the sky, literally filling, saturating the atmosphere with toxic metal particulates, all of it raining down on, on uh, the planet and every, everything that lives and breathes, uh, I, I've had to put my life on hold, Mike, to, to research this issue, which yeah. I have done nonstop for the last 10 years. Because, again, I believe if geoengineering does not stop, we will very soon have nothing to care about. And even if it stopped today, the damage they have already done, the seeds that have already been sown in all of us with these toxic metal particulates are, are uh, lethal beyond belief. And, and, again, we will all be feeling the fallout of what's already happened. Well, the website, folks, is geoengineeringwatch.org. That's where you will find Dane's work. And I also want to encourage you that... If you want to continue to hear the truth on, on topics like this, like everything we've talked about today, please support InfoWars. Become a member at prisonplanet.tv. You'll have access to all the archives and all the videos, and you get 11 memberships for the price of one. I think it's just under $6 a month or some, somewhere in that range. It's very affordable. Uh, Dane, what's, what's next? I mean, people have not really woken up to this issue like they have with GMOs, and GMOs is you know a genetic pollution risk. But geoengineering risk seems like it's at the same sort of, or maybe even a bigger threat than GMOs. But we haven't seen the big, you know, the, the, the masses rallying behind stopping geoengineering yet. It needs to start because it, it virtually affects all other issues in relation to GMO foods. Uh, we have data from these German and Norwegian researchers on horizontal gene mutation that's occurring in all plant life based on their studies right now from the absorption of these metal particulates. So there, there is nothing that is quote unquote truly organic at this point because of this saturation. Our bodies are absorbing again, as I stated, these particulates, which makes us more susceptible to all the electromagnetic uh, electro frequencies, radio frequencies that we're all exposed to. So uh, again, from every level, from every direction, the altering of the weather, the shredding of the atmosphere, the toxification of the soils, uh, toxification of the air we breathe, the, the conductivity in our bodies of these particulates, uh, from virtually every direction, the web of life is being thwarted by these programs. This is truly the issue that, if it's not dealt with, all these other issues will uh, be moot points, truly. They, I mean, not that they're not important. They are important. But geoengineering is the issue that encompasses everything. And, and if people truly did survive,
some research on this, Mike, they would understand the gravity of this issue and help us expose it. It, it, it. And if we could expose it, we could have a chance of stopping it. Those contributing to these programs that are helping to carry out these programs, we believe, have no idea uh, what they're involved with. And if we do could you, make them aware, we could stop it. Do you think this may be part of, you know, the, the globalists seem to have decided that the era of needing humans is over. They're They're trying to really, in the next few decades, destroy the human population, kill the so-called useless eaters, as they say, and move to a robotics society, an automated society, self-replicating robots, with only a few thousand humans, possibly, or maybe maybe a few million surviving and, and, and then running the show. Uh, and they know they only need really a small human population to maintain genetic viability of the human species. Is this possibly all part of that design? It may be a part of that design, but I believe based on all available data, that there are factors in this equation that the power structure did not bargain on. And one of those is the methane mass expulsion that's being released right now. The, uh, uh, we, we are on course right now for something called Venus syndrome. This is a scientific scenario. The term is self-descriptive. And uh, again, this is not about any of the Al Gore garbage. Dane, I, uh, I got to thank you for joining us. We got we to gotta let you go here and go to break, but it's geoengineeringwatch.org, everybody. I'm sorry about the short interview, Dane. I want Don't to talk worry. to you Thanks again. Thanks for taking the time, Mike. You bet. Thanks for Take being care. on. I want to talk to you again in the future. Visit InfoWars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. When you're on the site, you can also tune in 24 hours a day to my daily radio broadcast. There's also a free iPhone app to listen to the syndicated radio show when and where you want. Mm -hmm.